Welcome to worship here at Pomacea Presbyterian Church on Sunday, June the 28th. I'm using the word welcome with particular significance this morning because it's a word in the gospel lesson for this morning that Jesus uses six times. So when I say welcome to you, I'm offering that word on behalf of Jesus himself also. We're glad to be in worship together. We're also sharing in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper today, and all who seek to draw close to Jesus Christ are welcome to share in the meal with us this morning. We are offering two ways of partaking in the elements this morning. In this pandemic period, the officers of the church and of the Presbyterian Church nationally have authorized our partaking in communion through prayer and contemplation. That is to say, as we gaze upon the elements and reflect on them, you're welcome to share in the meal spiritually that way. But they have also authorized you to serve yourselves at home. So I give you a moment here to get some bread and some wine or juice from your home that when we come to that moment in the service, you might serve yourselves and serve one another. It's good that we can gather in worship and I welcome you and I am grateful that the Lord welcomes us together to gather around his table. Come, let us worship God.
let us be called to worship. We cry to God, how long will you hide your face from me? How long must I have sorrow in my heart all day long? Even in sorrow and pain, we trust in God's steadfast love. We sing to God who has dealt graciously with us. Please pray with me. Good and faithful God, help us join you in this place and time, for in you is peace and harmony. Heal the dissensions that divide us from one another and bring us back to a unity of love, bearing some likeness to your divine nature. Through the embrace of love and the bonds of godly affection, make us one in the spirit by your peace, which makes all things peaceful. We ask this through the grace, mercy, and love of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now turn our hearts towards God in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, in your gracious presence, we confess our sin and the sin of this world. Although Christ is among us as our peace, we are a people divided against ourselves as we cling to the values of a broken world. The profit and pleasures we pursue lay waste the land and pollute the seas. The fears and jealousies we harbor set neighbor against neighbor and nation against nation. We abuse your good gifts of imagination and freedom, of intellect and reason, and have turned them into bonds of oppression. Lord, have mercy upon us, heal and forgive us. Set us free to serve you in the world as agents of your reconciling love in Jesus Christ. Lord, have mercy upon us, heal and forgive us. Amen. Hear the good news. Hope does not disappoint us, for God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit in our baptism. Believe this good news and give thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we are forgiven. Let us now extend Christ's peace to one another in both mind and spirit. May the peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm glad that you're joining us for worship this morning. It makes worship better for us when you share in it and are a part of it. It really does. We're glad that you're here as a part of the church. In the Bible reading this morning, I want you to listen for something that Jesus says. It'll be coming up in just a minute. Jesus is teaching and he says, whenever you offer a cup of cool water to a little one, 
you are sure to gain a reward. Cool water can be really important in the Florida summer, can it? I bet you know what it means to be thirsty. And drinking water helps our bodies and helps us not only to be cool, but to stay strong. Everything that lives needs water in some way to continue to live. Jesus says that when we offer a cup of cool water, we're helping to welcome people. He's saying that part of what we're doing is providing for something they need. We welcome people, and that's what he's asking us to do, to welcome people into his love and to the church by providing something they need. And everyone needs water, even when what you provide is something as simple as a glass of water. That's a very important part of saying welcome to people who are trying to draw close to the love of God. Some of you have been doing some other things to welcome people this summer. Here are some books that some of you have been bringing in to share with other children into the fellowship hall. A book called Standing Tall. This book that somebody's brought in called I Beg Your Pardon, But This Is My Garden. You've been bringing in these books for the church to share with children who don't have books this summer and who need something to do to help them read and to spend the time in the summer. It's such a nice thing that you've been doing. When you share like this, you're helping to welcome others. Just as Jesus says, when you offer a cup of cool water, you're welcoming. When you help to provide for something someone needs, that's a part of welcoming them. Some of you have been bringing in groceries too. And the groceries are a part of helping to feed some children this summer who are hungry. I'm grateful for the peanut butter and for the granola bars and for the protein bars that you've been bringing in and all of the other groceries. These groceries are a part of the way that we provide for their need. And when we help to provide for their need, even if it's something as simple as a cup of cool water, we're welcoming them with the love of God. So thank you not only for being here, but thank you for welcoming others here. Thank you for welcoming them by helping to provide for what they might need. Now I want you to join me in praying, and I want you to think of someone, someone that you know or have seen in the neighborhood or in the community who looks like they need to be welcomed. Let's pray for that person right now. Dear God, the children are lifting up their prayers to you. They're thinking of someone who needs to be welcomed, someone who looks like they need a cup of water or a book to read or some food to eat. Help us to be a part of your welcome, God, that your love might gather all of those in who draw close to you. Help us to be a part of your welcome in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you for being a part of church this morning. I hope this week you'll look for places where you see a cup of cool water. I'd like to see some of the places where you have seen it shared, where it's helped people who are thirsty, or where it's been a sign of welcome. As a part of worship, we always include a time for offering, and it's an opportunity at the start of the week, the Sabbath begins the week, to think forward about where you would like to lift up part of what God has given to you in the sharing with others, offering forth your time, your talents, your resources. There's a way of welcoming others. Jesus says when we provide for the needs of others, even if it's as simple as a cup of cool water, then we are welcoming not only them, but also him. You're bringing forward groceries to the fellowship hall to help feed the hungry and the Hillsborough County community. You're bringing forward the children's books that we're using to provide for children who don't have things to read this summer or to help them get through the summer hours. Those are all a part of our offering. 
the gifts you're giving that sustain the mission of the church, its worship ministry, and our compassionate outreach, these are an important part of the offering. And I'm grateful for the generosity with which you've been sharing these. I invite you now to join with me in prayer as we prepare our hearts and minds for this time of offering. Generous God, you have said that to those to whom much is given, much is expected. So we pray now that your Spirit, your Holy Spirit, will motivate us, lead us, and shape us as we come to lift up our hearts before you in offering, both now and in the week ahead. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 10th chapter, verses 40 through 42. Jesus says, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I want you to think of a time when you've been thirsty, really parched, thirsty where you felt like if you didn't get something to drink pretty soon, you might pass out or collapse. Thirsty when not just your desire, but your whole physical being really was crying out for some water, something to assuage your thirst. In this Florida heat, one of the heat indexes this week was 115. In this Florida heat, it's not difficult to think of times when we might be thirsty. And we all have shared that experience. So there is something in this image that Jesus is using here. Whoever has gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of the disciple, truly I tell you, they will not lose their reward. There's something in this image that is acceptable, common, frequent, close for all of us. In fact, I think that this line from the Bible, whoever gives a cup of cool water welcomes me, I think it's a line that's deep in Christian literacy, even without your necessarily knowing where in the Gospels it comes from. Where have you seen a cup of cool water this week? When have you been really thirsty and you remember tasting it, tasting the water that soothes your thirst? In my own memory, I often remember times after working in the yard, particularly when for whatever reason I decided to do it in the heat of the day, when the gift of a cup of ice water afterwards or a glass of iced tea 
just felt like one of the greatest pleasures that life had. Do you know the experience? I also, though, remember times when I've had fever, and that particularly is a more prevalent experience, isn't it, for many people in our community with the pandemic. But I remember times when I had a fever and I was so hot, especially as a child, when I wanted something to drink. And if I was uh, going through a period where I'd been sick to my stomach, my mother would have to say, not yet, not yet, John. We have to get you past this point in the stomach virus. Sometimes at the right moment, she would give me even a few chips of ice to suck on as a way of cooling my thirst. There's something in this image that Jesus uses that everybody can identify with. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water, he said. Remember that Jesus is speaking here in Israel, and for them, the closeness of deserts would have been a part of their geological experience. It wasn't all desert, but there were deserts nearby. And of course, they're living in a time without plumbing, without the kind of access to indoor running water that we have today. We get so used to just walking to the sink and turning a knob that we forget how to even imagine what it's like not to have access to water that way. There are many places in the world today where people don't have access to clean drinking water like that. It's a phenomenon that's regularly a part of the experience of people in our world today. In the times I've been to Mom Croshu, Haiti, I'm aware of the fact that none of the homes or the hospital that I've been in there have running water. The water comes from a well, and somebody has to go and get it, and usually you have to wait in line, and they bring it in in a jug. It's valuable. So what do you think Jesus is referring to in this phrase? Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, they will not lose their reward. I think in part he's referring specifically to the act of hospitality that's present in offering something as simple as offering a cup of water to someone. It's literal in its image, but it's also broader. It's also meant to capture a kindness, the image of welcome. Welcome and hospitality are deeply seated duties in Scripture and in the New Testament. We find not only in Scripture but in the early church the exhortation to the Christian responsibility towards welcome. In fact, in these two verses, a reading of only two verses, the word welcome is found six times in just two verses. There's something very important here. The Greek word is dekomai, which most translations say is to welcome, although some say to receive, to bring into your own space, your own shelter, your own home. This is a very personal text. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones is just difficult to think about the images in this text without thinking of them personally. That is to say, in the interaction between you and another human being. But the gospel is always personal, isn't it? The good news of the gospel is always about, in some way, personal relationship between us and God, and between us and one another. What does it mean to welcome, to receive, my research this week indicates that it's referring here to a conscious act of hospitality, something that you do intentionally, whether it's physical assistance, like the openness of receiving someone into your shelter, perhaps shelter from the sun, or whether it's emotional encouragement, that also could be a strong form of welcome, or whether it's financial support. In the Gospels, that's also a part of what welcome means. All of those things are a part of what Jesus is referring to here. The Scripture in the early church in numerous places talks about the significance of hospitality and the responsibility in the Christian community to be offering it. Some of the early church historians and scholars 
write about it, and one of them says this, where it speaks of little ones here, we believe they are talking about Christians who are not mature or who may be insignificant in the social scale. Insignificant Christians here are probably meant to be insignificant in a social sense that they don't occupy a strong position in the social hierarchy. And so because of their social insecurity, they may also be sometimes spiritually marginalized, placed to the side. Little Ones has been by many commentators been seen to um, be that group of people, of those who are either marginalized or still growing in the faith. But I find myself drawn just to the specific literal translation, little ones, thinking it may very well mean children. Children who need clean drinking water, children who coming in from outside in the hot sun know the gift of being greeted and welcomed with something cold to drink. Jesus is saying here that even the tiniest social help, something that seems as broad and accessible to everyone as offering a cup of cool water, even that smallest help is significant in the work of the kingdom, the work of proclaiming the good news. And thus the, the little ones are as important as the prophets and the righteous to Jesus. That's why he lists them out in the hierarchy at the beginning. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. And of course, the one who sends him is God. And whoever welcomes a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of a righteous person. And a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple. Do you follow the hierarchy from God to Jesus? to prophets, to the righteous, to the little ones here. The work is of equal significance across the entire structure. One commentator says, here in these final verses of the 10th chapter, which bring to an end Jesus' longer discourse on mission, on evangelism in the 10th chapter, here in these final two verses, we find a powerful word of encouragement for all disciples reassuring them that there is no task of greater significance than the specific opportunity you find yourself given to be welcoming or hospitable in a particular moment. Now think about that, because the text is telling us that the, the opportunity you have, though it may seem very small, to welcome someone in the week ahead with as simple a gesture as offering a cup of cool water is as important in the mission of proclaiming the gospel as any sermon or the construction of any cathedral. That's what the text is saying. One of the earliest church leaders, Jerome, remarked that Jesus spoke of giving even a cup of cold water to these little people, lest any should allege that their own poverty or insignificance was an excuse for not being of service in mission. Jesus says the simplest help to the simplest person in need, the simplest disciple, is noticed by the heavenly Father. Jesus seems to be stressing here the concern they may have had that they won't lose their reward. And I understand that to be a human concern. What do we have to do to make sure we don't receive our reward all too human? But Jesus seems to be saying in this passage, look, if you're concerned about gaining a reward, then act with welcome and kindness. In his great commentary on Matthew's go gospel, Professor Dale Bruner says, in this 10th chapter, we find Jesus stressing the imperative of his mission, the mission of evangelism, sharing the good news with the world. But the closing exhortation in this larger chapter, these two verses, then stands on welcome and kindness. No matter how small it seems and the principal contribution it makes in the mission. Welcome them, welcome me. Welcome me, welcome the one who sent me. It is linked directly to the purposes of God. This is the closing imperative on sharing the good news here. Welcome and kindness. Is this relevant? 
Is this relevant in a period where the whole world is struggling with pandemic? Is this relevant in a month where once again we've been embroiled with the pain and the consequences of racism? Here we learn from the master himself, kindness is always relevant. And not only that, kindness is powerful. In the lectionary podcast this week, Reverend Bill Hall talks about a speaker he heard, Father Boyle, who came to a college and gave a talk on a mission to adolescent boys he had started in California. And Bill had a mug, a coffee mug, that he had gotten from hearing this priest speak. And on it was emblazoned a sentence that the priest believed and had used in his mission, and I think comes out of this gospel. Sooner or later, we all discover that kindness is the only strength that there is. Not only is it relevant, it is powerful. Here we find Jesus exhorting each one of us to the opportunity and the call to welcome, and to do so using the tool of kindness, even the seemingly smallest act of kindness, even a cup of cool water, as a form of welcoming and receiving into our community, into our relationships, the little ones, the greatest in need. May the Lord add his blessing in the Spirit, the Spirit's interpretation to the preaching and hearing of the Word. Amen. Let us now affirm our faith by reciting together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. All who seek to draw close to Jesus Christ are welcome to share in this meal. As we share in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper online in this pandemic period, you are invited to share in two different ways. One is by praying and in contemplation, reflecting on the elements of the Lord's table and letting them nurture you spiritually through that prayer and reflection. Or you are also welcome to serve yourselves at home. I have encouraged you to get bread or juice or wine from your own home and have it ready at this point to serve one another or to serve yourself as a part of the table setting. Jesus said, come to me all you who will labor and are carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Let us pray together the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Eternal God, holy and mighty, it is truly right, and it is our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, and to worship you in every place where your glory abides. We know, O oh Lord, how in this season, when so many are struggling with illness or worried about poverty, or when we are embroiled in the pain and journey of the issues in our community, we know how in this season your table comes to nurture us and to fortify us and to help us once again to live in faithfulness. 
Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the heavenly choirs and all of the faithful of every time and place, whoever and forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You sit your only begotten, in whom your fullness dwells, to be for us the way and the truth and the life. Revealing your love, Jesus taught that those who would hear him, Jesus healed those who believed in him, and re he received all who sought him, and lifted up the burden of their sin. We glorify you for your great power and love at work in Christ. By the baptism of his suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made us your people, a new people by water and by the Spirit. Remembering all of your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts that you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this our offering of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your holiest spirit upon us now and upon these gifts of bread and of wine that the bread that we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. And with all who are baptized in his name by your spirit, unite us with the living Christ, that we may be one in ministry in every place, as this bread is Christ's body for us. Send us to be the one body for Christ in the world. Today we lift up to you, Lord, those who are grieving. We lift up to you those who cry out with lamentation. We lift up before you those who are struggling with poverty and hunger. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would pour out your healing spirit on all who suffer from illness. Especially we pray that you would remove the virus from us and that you would work with all healthcare workers and public health officials in seeking to find a way to remove this virus and to heal those who are sick. We lift up the private and personal prayers of those who share at this table together. And we remember, O oh Lord, how you have called us to be your people for the world. Remembering that, we remember how Jesus taught us to pray together as his family, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ. How the apostle said, I share with you that which was shared with me. On the night before his death, our Lord took bread and after he had blessed it, he broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner he took the cup and said, this cup represents the new covenant which is made through the giving of my life. Drink all you of it. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's saving death until he comes again. The gifts of God for the people of God. Friends, I invite you now to share in the Lord's holy meal through contemplation or by sharing the sacrament and elements with one another at home.
Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this meal. Thank you for the way it has nurtured us in faith. Now through your Spirit, bring it to our memory in the evening and in the week ahead, that in every challenge and every opportunity, it might help us to be more faithful followers of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray, amen. go forward into the week ahead and welcome one another. Even as Christ has welcomed you, so you also welcome one another. Look for the ways in which the Spirit leads you to do that creatively, with the resources around you, with the time and the energy and the gifts that are given you. And know that as you go forward, the Spirit of Jesus Christ walks with you. Do not be afraid. Instead, through that guidance, welcome one another, and may the love of God the Father Almighty and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of that Holy Spirit guide and be with us all. Amen. <laughs>